We are on historic Highway 94 in Campo, California, and today we're visiting a site that has a mill that's over a century old and a ton of historic vehicles. Hey everyone, welcome to Sidetrack Adventures. This is Steve. Today I'm in Campo, California, and we've stopped at the Motor Transport Museum, which is located at the historic Campo Feldspar Mill. Now you cannot miss this place when you're driving down the highway. It is by far the tallest building anywhere around. But I've driven by a number of times and never had the chance to stop before. But that changes today. And I can already tell there is a ton of stuff to see here. So I'm looking forward to exploring the Motor Transport Museum. Campo, California is a historic town located about an hour southeast of San Diego. The town was founded in the 1860s and was an important stop on the old wagon road and later the auto roads through the mountain and the railroad. There is a lot to see on the grounds here, but I think we'll start with heading into the mill. This place looks pretty cool, but it also looks like it would be the perfect setting for a horror movie. The tower on the mill is about nine stories tall. Here's the historic marker for the mill. In 1918, Feldspar was discovered in Hauser Canyon, which is about six miles from here. I had no idea what Feldspar was before today, but it's a quartz-like rock that is used to make porcelain and is also used in some glass, pottery, and even soaps. This monument is also made out of Feldspar. With the nearby mine and the railroad being here, this was the perfect place for a mill. In 1926, Union Ironworks of Los Angeles built this mill for Standard Sanitary Manufacturing Company. The feldspar would get trucked here, ground to a powder, then loaded onto trains and shipped to Richmond to make things like toilets and sinks. Alright, let's check out the inside. Being able to get cheaper feldspar from overseas, Standard Sanitary Manufacturing left in 1947. A few other companies tried their luck here, but the mill closed for good in 1955. From what I understand, the fine feldspar powder would have been just everywhere had you come here when the mill was open, and it did cause breathing problems for the workers. Unfortunately, because there's stuff in the way, you can't get directly underneath the tower to get a great look up the middle. So this is probably about the best we can do. This Jeep was used in films made during World War II. If it looks a little off, it's because actual Jeeps were classified at the time, so this is a Hollywood mock-up to look like one. This is a World War I era early all-wheel drive vehicle. There are apparently very few of these around because most were sent over to Europe for the war. There are a few displays on the history of the area and the mill in here. This sign cracks me up. Yeah, electricity will kill you, especially when it has a knife. There is a lot of stuff being stored in this area, but there are some old machines back here too. I'm not sure what these would have been used for. I had said earlier that this would be the perfect location for a horror movie. Well, apparently, they actually are filming Slaughterhouse 2 here. This must have a pretty high budget. It looks like it costs an arm and a leg. From up here on the second floor, you can really get a good overview of the mill. We are now in the next room, and in here they're working on restoring these vehicles. We've moved outside, and there is a lot to take in. The Motor Transport Museum deals mainly with trucks and larger vehicles, but it does have some screen-used vehicles from movies as well, like that one in front of us. According to the docent here, this truck was used in The Aviator starring Leonardo DiCaprio, and also one of the Indiana Jones movies. I'm told this truck was used at the Hoover Dam,
Now I admittedly don't know a whole lot about cars, and not everything here is labeled, so if I miss something cool or rare, I just want to apologize in advance. There are at least a couple hundred vehicles here, and if you're into this sort of thing, you can easily spend a day here. Here are some more automobiles being restored. Check out this wagon. You can really see how simple engines looked back then. I think my vacuum cleaner has more parts than that. This is a 1936 Diamond T. I can't say I've ever heard of this brand before. We've made it to the back of the mill. This is where they would have loaded the feldspar onto the railroad. You definitely get all types of conditions for the vehicles out here. This one looks like it's in pretty good shape. And this one, not so much. This place is big, and almost every free space has something in it. What some of these things are, I don't know. In the 1980s, a man named Carl Calvert acquired this property in a trust for the Motor Transport Museum, and the museum has been here ever since. The museum's purpose is the preservation, public display of, and education of the public concerning motor trucks and related equipment. I know it looks like some items are just rusting away out here, but there's only so much time and money that can be dedicated to restoration. Most of the stuff here would have just been sold for scrap if it wasn't here, so at least it could still be seen. On this truck, you could just make out the business name on the door, Walter H. Barber Contractors from La Mesa, and I just searched on my phone and surprisingly this company is still around. Look at this old trailer, it's like a shack on wheels. Well, the door's open, or the door's missing, so we could take a look inside. I was expecting this to be a trailer with beds, something people could live in, but it looks like it was a work trailer where you could store equipment. There's the mill in the distance, just to get an idea of the size of this property. So it looks like we've made it to the bus district, and that bus says Clown Prison on it. And I hope there's a sign over there that gives us the backstory so we can find out more information on the Clown Prison. So there's no sign over here, so unfortunately I don't know the story of the Federal Clown Prison, but I can only assume you could fit at least a thousand prisoners on this bus. Here's an old Santa Barbara bus. And since the door is open, we could take a look inside. And wow, aside from it being really dusty in here, with the ad still up on the roof, this looks like it came straight out of another time. A few vehicles do have signs on them giving more information like this 1946 Ford, but unfortunately not very many of them do. We've only just scratched the surface on this place so far. It is unbelievable how much stuff is here. This is pretty neat. This is an old railroad call booth, probably from the San Diego and Arizona Railway. These were located along the tracks so crews could talk to a railroad dispatcher if needed. Looking up at the water tower, it looks like something's made a nest up there. This old gas station is a nice touch. This is a 1926 street sweeper. If you find yourself near Campo, this place is definitely worth a visit. I'm not really a car guy, and I found it pretty interesting. If you're into this sort of thing, be prepared to spend hours here.
So that's our look at the historic Campo Feldspar Mill and Motor Transport Museum. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and we'll see you next week.